Hi, I'm Harvey Lodish. I'm a professor of biology and professor of biological engineering at MIT. I'm also a member of the Whitehead Institute for Biomedical Research, where my research lab is located. And I'm Andrew Lowe, professor of finance at the MIT Sloan School of Management, a principal investigator at the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab, and the director of the Laboratory for Financial Engineering. And Harvey, I'm excited to be co-teaching this course with you because in addition to your academic background, you've also been directly involved in the biotechnology industry for almost 40 years. That's right. Almost 40 years ago, I helped found Genzyme. And since then, I've helped found a number of companies, including Millennium and most recently Rubius. All of which are very successful publicly traded companies now. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your personal motivation and what we can expect in the science portion of this course. To give you an idea of why I am passionate about this subject, let me describe briefly an experience with Genzyme. I work closely with Genzyme to develop their first drug, a recombinant protein that is used to treat a rare genetic disorder called Gaucher disease, a genetic disease that primarily affects individuals of Eastern European Jewish descent. Gaucher is generally not a fatal disease, but can be quite debilitating. And at the time I helped develop the drug, which really was the first personalized medicine and the first drug for a rare disease, I had no idea that this genetic disorder was in my family. It turned out many years later that my oldest daughter was pregnant with a child with Gaucher disease. I'm pleased to report that Andrew is now 17. He's been on grandpa's drug since he was 10 years old. Andrew, but I'm not the only one with a personal connection to this project. What about how you got involved with healthcare finance? A few years ago, a number of friends and my mother were dealing with various kinds of cancer. And in my mother's case, the standard treatments weren't working. So a friend of a friend introduced me to a very successful biotech company that was developing a number of new cancer drugs, including one that might help her. I was privileged to meet with the chief scientific officer of the company who brought along his chief financial officer because I guess he was told that I was a finance professor and he thought he might need a translator. During the course of our meeting, I asked what I thought was an innocent question. I asked them whether their sources of financing had any influence on their scientific agenda. As you can imagine, I was very interested in how they prioritize their agenda since one of the projects was related to the kind of cancer my mother was battling. I'll never forget his answer to my question. The chief scientific officer shook his head, looked at his CFO ironically, and then turned back to me and said, influence, our financing drives our scientific agenda. Now, I'm an economist, so I do get it. You have to pay for stuff. But as the son of a dying cancer patient, I was absolutely shocked and outraged. What do interest rates, stock market volatility, and Fed policy have to do with whether you should treat cancer via angiogenesis inhibitors, immunotherapy, or radiation? Nothing. And yet it drives their scientific agenda. Now, I'm no biomedical expert by any means, but should the science be driving the financing instead of the other way around? Well, that's what this course is about. That incident convinced me that finance actually plays a huge role in healthcare, particularly in the drug development process. One of the things that I learned early on is that this process suffers from a triple whammy of challenges. Number one, it takes a long time to develop a successful cancer drug, in some cases, 10 to 15 years. Two, it costs a huge amount of money on the order of hundreds of millions to billions of dollars per drug. And three, the chances of failure are extremely high, especially in oncology. This trifecta of challenges means that investors aren't going to be as keen to invest their capital in this process, especially when there are more attractive investment opportunities in other industries. That's why we, along with our colleagues at MIT, created 15480X and this online course. Over the next few weeks, we're going to cover quite a bit of science including recombinant proteins and monoclonal antibodies, and emerging technologies such as gene therapy, gene editing, cancer immunotherapy, and cell therapies. And on the finance and business side, we're going to cover portfolio theory, cost of capital estimation, capital budgeting, 
real options analysis, securitization, and machine learning applied to predicting clinical trial outcomes. And we'll discuss how all of these fit together, how the finance and the science combine to build a successful biotechnology company. Because the course is really focused on the science and business of biotechnology, and we really need both in order to be able to make progress. If you're a business student looking to make a career in the healthcare industry, or if you're a scientist looking to commercialize some of your research, or if you're just interested in how finance can make a real difference in people's lives, this course is for you. Biomedicine is at an inflection point today. Thanks to the amazing dedication and creativity of tens of thousands of scientists, engineers, clinicians, business professionals, investors, regulators, and patients, we are now curing diseases that were fatal just a few years ago. Finance doesn't have to be a zero-sum game if we don't let it. And by using the scientific and financial tools learned in this course, we can all do well by doing good, and we can do it now. And thank you for joining us on this mission, and we look forward to working with you in the coming weeks.